Hi, I'm Pete Bennell, and I'm the Life Group Pastor here at Calvary. Today I get to tell you a little bit about God's work in my own life. I was raised in a Christian home, and I really don't remember a time when we weren't going to church. At the age of seven, I realized that I was a sinner, and I knew that I needed Jesus as my Savior. I trusted in Christ at that time, I was baptized, and have really never looked back. Jesus got a hold of my heart at that young age, and he's held on to it since then. That commitment that I made 40 years ago has stuck. A little more than 10 years after my original profession of faith, God brought a new realization of freedom into my life. By this time, I was a college student and was studying in preparation for pastoral ministry. I was assigned a book to read, Transforming Grace by Jerry Bridges. This book helped me to realize what true grace was and gave me a new way to look at my Christian faith. It was truly freeing. You see, I'd been living life knowing that Jesus had saved me by grace and that he would take me to heaven one day by his grace. But that time in between being saved and being taken to heaven, I was living as if it depended on my good works to please God. I was living as if I had to read the Bible, go to church, do good things, stop doing bad things, and just try really hard in order to please God. So I believed that I was saved by grace, but had to live my Christian life by works. This was not living in freedom. I was still living under the law. Grace is God's unearned favor that's shown to sinners who don't deserve God's kindness or forgiveness. And that gracious favor is what saves us. It also enables us to live a Christian life, and it makes us perfect in heaven one day. Bridges says it this way in his book. We are brought into God's kingdom by grace. We are sanctified by grace. We receive both temporal and spiritual blessings by grace. We are motivated to obedience by grace. We are called to serve and enabled to serve by grace. We receive strength to endure trials by grace. And finally, we are glorified by grace. The entire Christian life is lived under the reign of God's grace. I had been living under an oppressive weight of do's and don'ts. Not for my salvation, but for my Christian life. I was trying to live it in my own strength and not through God's grace. The Apostle Paul says it this way in Galatians 3.3. He wrote, after beginning with the Spirit, are you now trying to obtain your goal by human effort? That is a great question. We begin our Christian walk with that acknowledgement that we can't do it on our own. But then we slowly adopt this mindset that the rest of the Christian life is going to be based on my human effort. So what did living the Christian life by grace do for me? I was no longer living for performance but rather living in response to God's grace and in the power of his grace. The things I did were no longer done because I have to or because I should, but they began to morph into desires. I was doing them because I wanted to. So here's a practical example. Uh, living in grace for me means that I read my Bible daily because I want to. And if I miss a day, I'm not concerned that somehow God is angry with me or that now my day is going to be worse because I didn't read the Bible. The power to read the Bible and the motivation to read the Bible daily is God's grace working in me. And I don't get extra credit when I do it and I don't live in fear if I miss it. I think that's some pretty good freedom. I kind of went on a binge of reading books about grace. If you feel like you're needing a new perspective on God's grace, here are some suggested books. Transforming Grace, which I already talked about. Disciplines of Grace, which is also by Jerry Bridges. Another great one on extending grace to others is Grace Awakening by Chuck Swindoll. I hope that hearing about how God brought me to greater freedom through his grace has encouraged you today. Have a great day.